Hi guys and welcome to today's Bitcoin Breakdown where we are going to be discussing everything that's happened in the past 24 hours. Now, this is incredible. If we go back to last episode, what did I say? There's a possibility that it could actually be going on more of a bullish run uh, considering we had one, two, three pivot lines but I said this is the area that I would like to look in. If it starts to come into this area and continues to push up, well, then I'd be looking for buys. What's happened? We are now turning the corner, which is absolutely incredible. If we go on the, in fact, we don't do the monthly. If we go on the weekly, for example, we can still see the EMA is quite a distance away, but look at that. Look at how far we've jumped. Then we can go into the daily. The EMA has been broken on the daily. Remember, Yesterday, we were talking about the weekly and the daily. The EMA was being really respected. Now, it's been completely shattered. It's been completely broken. So, what am I looking for now? I'm looking for more of this area. If we're going up this high with that much of a move, we could be going for this. Or, possibly, we could be going for something around here. These are two massive areas of uh, imbalance, right? That's at least on the daily. However, we go into the four hour, we can start to uh, narrow that down. In fact, again, it's completely correct. This worries me a little bit here, this one hour, because it's come all the way up to this pivot line, basically touched it. And if I see a big move to the downside, then I'm back onto the hypothesis that we'll be moving back down. Because this little hammer pattern here it basically shows indecision in the market. Basically, it's saying, I really want to go up, but I just don't have enough, right? But I would be hopping into cells if I see one big push to the downside in the next hour or so, right? If I start to see a big down push, then I'll be hopping in. This is kind of uh, neither here nor there for me. What I would be looking at, if I go and use a Fibonacci sequence from top to bottom. What I would be looking for is for it to come back down, possibly to even this 0.5 area. I, I would be using this EMA when it starts to come back up with the Fibonacci sequence. And if it all aligns, say it comes up to the 0.71, when it comes down, the EMA bounces, it bounces straight off the EMA. Then again, I'm looking to use it because look at this. We've got on this exact line here, this pivot line right here is a 0.618. It's a 0.618 directly on this pivot line. So what we're basically looking for here is it to probably come back down to this area. And if we see a strong push to the upside, I'll be hopping in. Do I think it's going to be happening over the Saturday, Sunday? Probably not. But again, just to make that very clear, if it comes down to this 0.618 line, the EMA is up here as well, and we get a nice rebound. So it comes down, we touch it, we get a big wick. I'm hopping in because I'm thinking it's now going to go and keep on continuing and searching these areas. Again, I don't really like what's going on here because we basically come up and nearly touch this pivot line here, and now we're starting to drop down. So what would I be thinking? What would I be doing? Again, I might even be looking at more buys than I am sells. What would I have to do to see a sell to hop in? Well, we just created a new higher high. And this is the thing. If it breaks below this 618, then I'm probably going to be looking for sells. That's what I'm going to be doing. For it to come down, touch this line, and then start to fall off again. That's what I'd be looking for. So this 0.618 line, I think, is going to be really pivotal. Or maybe even the 0.7. But it's going to be in between here that's going to happen. Why? Because experience has taught me that the 618 and 0.71 lines are great for crypto to bounce off. And we've got a pivot line right here. And to be fair, we've got a pivot line around that 0.786. But, of course... It would break through there regardless if it's going to go down and actually present another sell opportunity. But we will have to see. It's uh, quite incredible that we're talking about the last couple of days how we had one, two, three pivot lines and it might be just moving around or it's going to explode out. 
we had that explosion, we've got a perfect retouch, and now we're coming up. But look at this. We're doing basically the same thing up here and nearly retouching it. So I would be looking and saying to myself, mm, what's going to be happening? Let's go into the one hour and have a bit of a more decent look, right? Again, we can see that it's come straight up here. It's the exact same thing. EMA is going to be around here. So again, I'm going to be looking at this 0.71 line maybe even the 0 0.786, 0 0.71 or the 618, because if it comes down to here, I would need to see basically this happen, right? A lot of wicks coming down and retouching this line. And again, if I think it's going to go down and it comes up, again, we're waiting for a retouch over here. So it's basically a waiting game. What would I be doing right now, guys, if it does burst under this 0.68, or it starts giving a lot of wicks up here, I'm looking for a sell. A lot of wicks, a lot of retouches around this line, I'm looking for a sell. But if it starts to fall underneath here, especially here, and starts to retouch, then I'm going to be looking for sells. Again, Saturday, Sunday, I don't expect a lot of stuff to come from there. There's not a lot of volatility. All the banks are closed. Therefore, all the whales are out. They won't be in the markets. So we'll have to be seeing what's going to be going on there. But for now, guys, just like I said down here, unfortunately, we will have to just wait it out. If you took my advice and we came up to this area and then I said, uh, if it comes into this area and then continues to push up, Let's go for a buy. You would have hopped in here. Unfortunately, I was out at that, that time. And then you would have come in for a sell. Where do you put your stop loss, though? That's the annoying thing, because this candlestick is so big. You'd really, realistically, at, and this would be really risky, put it here, and then give it a bit of breathing room underneath this pivot line, just in case it wicks. And then you could still go up and say, okay, I've made a one to three. But that's a harder one to get. It's a massive line, really risky. Would I? Am I going to include that in our 18% that we've made in two weeks? No, I'm not. Sometimes the market just moves a bit too quickly. And that's just one of those cases. But stick with us, guys. We'll talk about this more on Saturday and Sunday, see how it pans out, and see if we can't get in to another trade. Anyway, I hope you've had a wonderful day. I hope you learned a lot about this, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye.